Hey friends, we are coming near the end of this journey going through the Gospels. This week we're going through John chapter 9 to John chapter 15, and I just want to jump in and give you a quick preview of what's coming. So John chapter 9, it's dealing with the subject of who can truly see. We see here a boy born blind, which you're going to see in the text. He's probably somewhere around 13 to 15 years old, and we get to read the events of one day in his life, where in 24 hours, he experiences the impossible. He goes from being blind all of his life to seeing. He endures the unthinkable. He's excommunicated from his faith and perhaps his family, but then he encounters the unimaginable as he sees and he finds Jesus. This chapter has a whole lot to say about what it actually means to see in our lives as we go through. John chapter 10 is the arrival of the good shepherd. And in this chapter, Jesus is jumping all the way back to this prophecy from Ezekiel 34. So the PDF that I lay out for you, I've got some notes for you. And I want you to see he's dealing with two shepherds who are following two different kinds of father. I, I, I dive into a comparison in that that you can see. He talks about what it means to actually hear and follow the good shepherd. And also there's a study that I put in John chapter 10 about God's heart for the nations and how all through the Old Testament, he said that he's wanted for other sheep to come in the pen. I deal with some references there. John chapter 11 could be called the resurrection and the life. Those are the words Jesus spoke there. And that's where we see our beloved friend Lazarus and we step into a mystery. It says that because Jesus loved Lazarus and Mary and Martha, he stayed and let them go through one of the most unspeakable tragedies. It, it's one of these things that we see in John chapter 11, that what we often see as a distant silence from God is actually a definitive statement of his love, that God's silence and his waiting isn't, act, isn't passive, but it's actually active. And he's doing much in our active restoration in those moments. So I want to say John chapter 11 is a chapter of mystery. If you are somewhere waiting on the promises of God in a place that just doesn't feel good, this is a chapter you need to just dive in and let the Holy Spirit speak to you this week. John chapter 12 would be called, Here Comes the King. And it's when Jesus says the hour has come. I lay out in the notes where Jesus talks about the hour. Uh, it shows up many times in John. So I lay out what is meant by that. And we see the hour. The hour that Jesus has is the hour that, the, that he is to be anointed, that he has been appointed. And ultimately, it's the hour that you and I have to give an answer. John chapter 12 ends with three different kinds of answers that people give to Jesus. Those who refuse to believe those who stand in a halfway faith, and those who choose to step out of the dark and into the light of a life full of leading others. John chapter 13 could be called the posture of true love. We see the last hours of Jesus's life, the last meal, the last talk, and of all places our Savior could be found, he's washing feet. And I know for some of you, you're like, oh, that's it. But we walked through actually what happened with washing feet and why that was a job only for servants. I've got that in the notes for you. And you'll see the big idea of John 13 is that love is self-emptying service that refuses to scapegoat and it refuses to stop. And it's a challenge because often for us, love is seen most in the places and with the people that we're most challenged to walk it through. I give some good challenges to us there for us to walk through. John chapter 14 is, I, I love John 14. I call it the jackpot of joy. Uh, this is home to some of the most beloved Bible passages. So I said, if you're struggling, John chapter 11 will really help you. Listen, if you need a shot, a spiritual shot of adrenaline, John chapter 14, holy cow, all the promises. And the big promise is this is the chapter that deals with the coming of the Holy Spirit. And God starts the whole chapter in the language of a wedding. I, I lay out what is meant when Jesus says, I go away to prepare a place for you. It is so beautiful. It'll bring tears to your eyes. Finally, John chapter 15 is the fruit of a life that abides. And Jesus says in this chapter that we are called to remain in him. We have a joy that's called to remain in us. There's fruit that God wants to remain on the earth. And ultimately, he gives a promise that he himself will remain with us with all of our faults and all of our flaws. In this chapter, Jesus jumps back to Isaiah chapter 5 to a prophecy that's there that Jesus has actually come now to fulfill, that we've only been a vine that could bear wild branches because Jesus himself needs to come as the vine and the Father is ready to graft us in. This chapter deals with what do we do when we struggle to bear fruit, and really even more than that, how do we bear fruit on planet Earth? It walks all the way through all of that. 
Listen, we are just now two weeks away from the end of this 90-day challenge reading the Gospels. I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm celebrating with you. And I hope that you just remember and breathe in deeply that, again, what we're looking for is not perfection. It's progress, that we would come to God in a regular practice that would turn to a passion. So I just pray for you this week. Father, I ask right now, alongside my friends, that you would meet with us, that you'd speak to us. This week that we would be able to breathe in your presence, that you would give new revelation. I pray that you would do what only you can do. You say the word is living and active. So Lord, you know the ways that you want to take your word and contextualize it to each of our hearts this week. Would you come and do it? And I just want to thank you in advance that you will. So thank you, Lord, for every testimony that you're sealing now. I bless my friends. I pray, Lord, that your voice would be loud and the enemy's voice would be kicked far away from them. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, friends. Go and have a wonderful week in the Gospels.